Hey everyone, we're out here at DotConf 25 and I ran into Hal here and MCP server, brand new in Splunk and you yep. know a lot about it. What can you tell us? So um, MCP server, if you've not heard of it, model context protocol, um, it is one of the new hotnesses, I guess you could say, in the AI realm because it's all hot, but it is important. It's pretty cool. Um, when you think about like, um, uh, so buzzwords and working backwards from buzzwords to what's real, uh, what's real, um, MCP is just a, it's a protocol, um, but the buzzword is agent or agentic. And the buzzword is like, you know, is this system doing something itself or is it, you know, I type something and it, it spits text out. So MCP is kind of part of the agentic wave. It's, it's enabling the, the bigger things. So it's where the systems can start to talk to each other, um, bringing more information kind of into scope. So, and for me, it's been kind of exciting to kind of watch basically the the capability get you know a little more a little more so it, it feels a little bit like we're seeing the, the science fiction of our youth kind of start to come become into being so it's a pretty exciting time but what splunk is doing is um, they have a splunk mcp server uh this shipped uh we had a controlled availability release uh, a couple months ago but now we're are announcing that it's general availability for splunk cloud customers and uh beta for splunk enterprise customers so that's pretty much everybody every splunk customer has the capability to check this out um, basically what you need, you need a few pieces. You need a client and, uh, some of you may be familiar with, uh, for example, Claude desktop. Um, there, there's a lot of different pieces of software and services that can be that MCP client, but what it's doing, it's, it's, um, making, making a tool available to the LLM. So why does an LLM need a tool? Well, uh, what an LLM, a large language model is great at doing is generating text. What it's not great at doing is going outside of the box that it's in. So MCP is a, it's a protocol, a way to give a structured set of tools to the LLM. And for example, with Splunk, you run a search. Well, I can type in a, a question and, and say, I, I've, I, I need to figure out what's going on with, with app XYZ. And you can, you can have Splunk go run the search on your behalf. You'll give it, give it a set of um, um, uh, privileges. You have to go make an API key. Um, so it'll run as the, the user of the, of the API key. And once you've configured that, it will basically, um, it's, it's very nimble. So you describe a problem and it will go get metadata from Splunk about your environment, for example, list indexes and read the source types and that kind of thing, and then try to solve your problem. Now, one tool isn't so interesting. Um, one of my favorite examples, and we wrote this up in, in Splunk Lantern, um, is, is there's a getting started guide that, that helps you kind of get started with the Splunk MCP server. But one of the use cases is, uh, it really hit home for me. Um, we grabbed um, uh, Atlassian, so they have the Confluence uh, wiki. There's a, um, a Confluence MCP server. So what you do is, let's say that you've got, and you could do this with anything, any set of information. You know, it could be um, a different kind of wiki. It could be um, a GitHub repo. It could be a, a notes application like Obsidian. There's a a lot of different ways to do this or notion. Have a runbook. You know, hey, this is what my application is in Splunk. Um, you know, here's the application name. Here's a set of searches that we commonly use. Whatever. Just knowledge that, you know, you would already create for your team to be able to do what you do, right? Engineering runbooks. So that kind of thing. Tell the model or give it give access to multiple tools like Confluence and Splunk. And then say, I, I'm an engineer. I've got an error message in this app. You don't tell it what the SPL is. You don't tell it the name of the indexes. It will go to Confluence, search the, for the right page with the, you know, for example, app name runbook. It'll come up with that search itself. It'll read the information from Confluence. And if that, that page says, you know, here are the name of our indexes, here's some SPL, what, whatever, or here's, you know, linked our dashboard, it'll then go ask Splunk about that artifact, it'll go look up the knowledge objects. It'll pull that into scope and then it'll go write a search. And it'll basically iterate multiple times until, you know, let's say that you've got, you know, an error code such and such. And say, so, yeah, we found error code such and such. It, so it'll refine it. You can watch it as it thinks. It's really fascinating to watch. Anyway, end of the day, the MCP server is kind of the start of that journey to enable this kind of multi-turn interaction with an uh, Gentic AI system. So we have all these 
systems like Atlassian, you mentioned Notion, mm -hmm. you mentioned Obsidian, and now Splunk. Does, you have your MCP server on all of these different tools. Yep. You have your MCP client, and it just automatically works with all these MCP servers and the runbook scenario that you said. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. Yeah, and it's um, it's it's kind of interesting to see it, it, the the models are all different, the capabilities are different. You know, you might have you know OpenAI or Gemini or you know a handful of uh, you know Claude desktop or Claude models. Um, there's a lot of different ones. They they all have some subtleties that you'll you'll kind of get used to um, as you kind of work with them. And some of them are better at working with MCP tools than others. It is still a pretty new technology. But once you get the right ones, like a like Claude four or a GPT five or a Gemini two point five Pro. It's off to the races. Now, for the audience out there that wants to get started with mm -hmm. Splunk MCP server yep. and some MCP clients kind of get going, get their feet wet, how do they go get this information? Yeah, now, one of the funny parts is that this uh, it's a new technology. You're, everybody's trying it. It's hot. There's high demand, right? Well, there's a lot of open source uh, implementations of even a Splunk MCP server. I counted seven the last time I looked. Uh, it's a funny circumstance, but there's only the one official one, right? Um, if you search, search for Splunk MCP server, um, we have an entry in Splunk base. So there's an app that you install uh, and that will run on your Splunk Enterprise instance or there's a separate service that runs in Splunk Cloud. Um, but that, that, has, that Splunk base listing has links to all the documentation. And uh, also there's a, there's a Lantern article that I mentioned that kind of extends out some of those use cases for you. Fantastic, thanks for all the information, Al. You're Appreciate welcome. it. All right, thanks.